Hey guys, welcome to this tutorial. Today I'm going to be going over how to add a motion blur hack to your games in the Blender Game Engine. So right here I just have an always sensor with a filter 2D actuator and the motion blur setting here. However this setting here, if you press play, is sort of more of a hazy dazed filter. Really it just sort of looks like the player is drunk or something, it doesn't really look like motion blur at all. So in this tutorial we're going to be going over how to use the radial blur script to add a sort of fake motion blur to the game. So when I move the camera like this you'll notice that the edges of the cube get sort of skewed outwards to make it look as if there's motion blur. Now this isn't perfect of course, the cube should be sort of having vector blur going sideways, however I do find it is a little bit nicer to look at than the standard motion blur that we have here. So let's go ahead and get started. So up the top here, file new, make a new blend file. Then what we're going to do is choose Blender Game Engine, GeoSL, animation frame rate of 60, X, delete the cube, shift A, add a plane, S to scale, make it fairly large. And then what we're going to do here is add a couple cubes, so we have reference points, uh, maybe just duplicate this, shift A to add new ones if you want to, or just shift D to duplicate them and drag them around. Now what we need next is a first person shooter setup, however this can take a while to put together, so down in the description below is a link to an add-on that I made a while ago. And basically what it does is adds this button here, and what you can do is just click that, and there we go, we have our full FPS add-on ready to go. So once you've got that installed, click that, and then this will add your FPS setup. You can now delete this camera. Then what we're going to do is we will select our player here, and then we'll go over to Game Logic. Then on our player here, choose Add Python, call this Blur. And then we're going to add an always actuator and then choose true pulse and join this in. Alright, so now we need a new script. And this here we can also just call motion blur.py. Up the top, import BGE. Then for this tutorial, we're going to be using modules. So just type in DEF to define a module, space, and then the name of it. So let's call it blur and use COINT as the parameter. Then what we're going to do is type in own is equal to cont.owner and then go down to the next line. Now what we need to do is check if the previous rotation of the player has been stored or not. Now when we start the game this won't be actually attached to the player at all. So we have to check that first and then add the property if it's not already there. So to do that I'm going to type in if uh, old rotation not in own, so we don't have the property. Then we're going to do a colon next line, and here what we're going to do is add the property. So own old rotation is equal to, and in here we want the rotation of the player. So own dot world orientation dot copy. All right, and then we're going to go back to the start. I'm going to make this bigger, and then otherwise, if it is already on the player, so I press delete four times, and then else. So here I'm going to assign a variable called diff, and this is basically going to store the difference between the current rotation and the previous rotation. So that's going to be equal to own dot world orientation dot to eula dot z. And we're going to do that minus own old rotation dot to eola dot z. So basically, what we're doing here is, if I zoom out a little bit, what we're doing here is we're getting the current rotation, we're converting it to x, y, and z, and then we're using the z component and then we're minusing that from the current world orientation and we're converting that as well to XYZ and then we're using the Z component and we're minusing both of these off each other to give us a value here. Now for our radial blur filter we can't have negative values for the amount of blur so to ensure that the output here is always positive all we have to do is type ABS 
and then a bracket and over here another bracket and this will just convert any negative values back to positive so to make sure that there is an actual difference we're going to type print diff and then underneath that we have to update our old rotation so own old rotation is equal to own dot world orientation dot copy and now what we can do is in here change it to module if you had a normal script then you'd be able to just uh, use script here and put that in there but we are using a module so what we have to do is choose module here and then from within that we have to type in the name here there also needs to be dot py at the end so motion blur and then we're going to type dot and from within the script we want blur so motion blur dot blur and then I'm going to press P and we can move the mouse a bit and then we're going to go here to console now in the console here you can see there's an error on line 11 so we're going to go here and I haven't actually spelled orientation correctly so I just put a T there then go into texture mode and press P again move around and we'll go back to the console here and you'll notice we get a whole bunch of different values so what we need to do with these now is then plug them into the radial blur filter so to add the radial blur I'm going to select the camera here and then I'm going to scroll down in the render settings all the way to the bottom till I get to this post processing filter section if you don't have this section don't worry it is also an add-on that I've written uh, similar to the FPS setup so there is a download in the description below if you want to go ahead and get it don't worry it's all free there's also videos on the channel showing you how to install and use them properly so anyway once you have that what you want to do is with the camera selected we want to choose radial blur and then we want to click add filter alright and this will add ourselves a property here with the radial density It's basically the amount of blur now what we want to do is in real time we want to affect this value so our filter changes so to do that I'm going to select the player body here and we're going to change this back to motion blur and what we want to do is we can now delete this we've confirmed it's working and instead what we're going to do is we will take this diff value and we will plug it into this property here so to do that we need the scene to access the objects so scene is equal to own dot scene then enter so here what I'm going to do is type in scene dot objects then a square bracket quotation mark and here we need the name of the object we want to get so the object that we want to get is the camera here because it has the property on it so select the camera and then go to the object settings copy and paste the name just control C and control V then a closing quotation mark and closing square bracket then from that object we want to get the property radial density so another square bracket quotation mark and you can just copy and paste this as well alright and then once we have that what we want to do is we want to assign it to diff so radial density is equal to diff now at the moment it might not be very obvious so what you can do is you can increase this value here just by multiplying it so just to show this working I'm going to select 4 and then press P and you'll notice we have a whole bunch of blur when we move the camera lots however this might be a little bit too obvious so what we can just do is I found something like 1.5 work quite well move around lots we'll just move it side to side you notice you get a fair amount of blur and then once you stop moving everything is crystal clear so there we go guys at the end of this tutorial hopefully you enjoyed it if you did feel free to leave a like comment or share down below all of that stuff is greatly appreciated again for both of those add-ons there's links down in the description below for tutorials on how to use them as well as download links but apart from that hope you found the video useful have an awesome week and i'll see you guys in the next one